I'm Louisa Barton for the Horse Talk Show, and I am here with Jennifer Ireland and Dr. Alberto Roulin from the Equine Performance and Innovative Center. We call it EPIC because it's EPIC. And this story is certainly EPIC. We're talking about tough, um, the foal, had a very difficult start. Uh, when we finished up the last segment about this, we were just talking about walking him around the hole that was actually prepared for him to be euthanized. So uh, Jennifer's been telling us the story and I'm gonna let her carry on right where we left off. Jennifer. So um, the phone call to this, uh, this lady, and I don't really know what her role is, but that really made a difference. I, and so the other vet was standing there and she was like, what are they going to do? Because she's prepared to, you know, do it. And I said, I'm not doing it. Because I've had to put horses to sleep before. And although it was hard, I knew it was right. But there was something that kept telling me, I don't feel right about this. I don't feel like it's done. And it could have been an emotional thing, but I don't think so. Because I've been through this before. And well, because you're a medical professional, too, you really understand the difference between you know, a horse that has a chance and one that doesn't, and you know when a horse is suffering, you know it as painful as it is, you know when it's time, right. and you didn't feel that. So as a medical professional, I feel like that's probably even more um, likely to be the professional choice rather than emotions, even though clearly you were emotionally attached, right? Yes, absolutely. And the, and the biggest thing is I had been over at Epic when I first, in March, be, for another thing and just had a tour of the place I didn't and I met Dr. Rolan but I didn't really know anything beyond that I knew he had a hyperbaric chamber but Dr. Marsh and at Equine Sports Medicine uh, or Equine yeah I think it's Equine Sports Medicine Clinic in, in Weatherford Texas I called him he said get that baby in the hyperbaric chamber I said I'm going to call Dr. Rolan over at Epic and see if he thinks he can help him well, he called me back, and he's like, get him over here by five. We're firing up the chamber now. So I was panicking. I'm like, i got to get, get him over there. i got to get him over there. This is like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Hauled all over there. I actually hauled my trailer without lights. <laughs> but I didn't care. I was getting him to the clinic. <laughs> and uh, loaded him up and, and got him there. And they're um, the most amazing crew. And they started right away. He was in that chamber within 30 minutes. And that was just the beginning of this. And I, I think maybe my medical background allowed me to think outside the box instead of just saying, this is it, you know, there's no hope. I, I just think that helped me. And I, I hope that this story will help somebody else that maybe feels like they're at the end of their rope and they, there's no alternative because there may be. And he is the true story of don't give up if you don't want to yet so until they say there's nothing else of course they did tell me that and here he is <laughs> and he's eight months old now <laughs> so. dr ryan i'm going to pass you over the important microphone here and let you tell us uh, tell us your story with uh, with tough so when tough uh, arrived at our place or right from the call um we started gathering all the data and getting all the information and then we get start getting the blood work results and to be 100% honest when we started when our team started reviewing all the results we were not sure what we were getting into it was pretty remarkable at the point he arrived the creatinine was already 9.5 and he was septic right he's it was weak. His legs were very weak, like Jennifer said. He could have barely walk, but he would still get up and nurse. He had that fire on him. And Jennifer had this gut feeling, like purely a gut mom's feeling, plus obviously her medical background. And she just asked us to please try, right? So we were trying to keep our hopes up but we were, going to, we were going to take it hour by hour and see where, we, where we're going to be. So the first thing that we know is that any horse that came in that situation or any patient will need oxygen. Oxygen is just a, a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And with the hyperbaric chamber, we are providing 100% oxygen 
at high at, at high pressure, so the oxygen will definitely penetrate. What we didn't know on top is, okay, that how is that going to help his kidney failure? We knew we were going to make him feel better, but there is no, we we have no research data. There's no scientific data that prove the hyperbaric chamber helps with kidney failure, zero at all. And we tell that to Jennifer and say we we just don't have any scientific data to to prove it the horse has been receiving what the science actually says it should get up to now he hasn't he has received everything by the book so we had to think outside the book outside the box because he was actually treated well his body was just not responding so then after the first hyperbaric just like many other patients they, they get a lot of energy out of that because they actually have oxygen right so he came out of the hyperbaric and he went back to nursing and then after that he also developed swelling in the hocks and that was another concern that happens with septic folds right because they can get septic joints so that then we get another complication with him so we get in the hocks we clean the hocks we flush the all the bacteria and all everything all the uh, all the bacteria in the hog and we go back in the chamber and he keeps getting a little bit healthier and one thing that we know about the chamber is that it actually makes the antibiotics work better oh. one thing another thing that the chamber does is that it actually after certain amount of chamber treatment it increases the stem cell release into the horses so there's some beautiful research on people where the hyperbaric chamber stimulates stem cell production. So just based on those two facts that we knew and Jennifer's gut feeling to keep, to keep going, we just kept going. And every treatment that we did, he got a little better. We did have setbacks, no question about it. We had setbacks, we had a, a more joints got infected. And I would say that probably 99.999% percent of the time an owner would have just say yeah I, I can't handle anymore because it's not just the, it's the, the emotional distress that she was going every time she got a bad news I lived, like, in, I lived, <coughs> I lived and died by lab work like okay what's what's the creatinine today well it's great I'm like and the next day well it went back up I'm like Ugh. and it was like the creatinine was going like this at first I mean we got great drop and then it was like like oh no I know and then Mumi who you know works with him and, and does she's amazing um she says well I, I kind of quit telling you a little bit you were so stressed and I was traveling because there was no work I had to go to Houston to find work at this point because of COVID and so I was in Houston got COVID myself and then had to stay away and just those guys took care of him like they were they love him so much like and, he was theirs. well right? let me just say <laughs> part of his treatment plan on the thing said all his antibiotics his fluids and then every day it said hugs and kisses and they had to check off that somebody gave him hugs and kisses it was on his treatment plan yeah i was like what <laughs> <laughs> so just um, a little oops, adding adding that in tell the rest of the story perfect so basically we just kept going on a little bit of science that we have, the hyperbaric will stimulate stem cell production and it makes antibiotics work better. So we kept going, we had our setbacks, we have our, it was a little bit of a roller coaster, we took it hour by hour, and probably in the next segment, then I'll tell you a little bit more on how we made it. Perfect. <laughs> and then he, he, he just joined in to comment on how much he likes hugs and kisses. Louisa Barton for the Horse Talk Show, make sure you tune in for the rest of this fantastic story about Tough. <laughs>